Hello everyone and welcome to another Pathfinder Lair video. Today I finally get to the Inventor class. I'll be covering the class features today and the feats in another video. Unfortunately, I'm not going into this blind because I have an Inventor in my Demons and Deities game. Which you can check out up in the card. So, let's get started with the Inventor. <laughs> Hold up. So, for basics, train in perception, expert in fortitude and will saves, as well as trained in reflex saves. For skills, they're trained in crafting, obviously, and they're trained in additional skills equal to 3 plus their intelligence modifier. They are also trained in simple and martial weapons and unarmed attacks. They also get medium armor, which is pretty nice, and light and unarmored defense. They're also trained in Inventor Class DC. So first let's talk about some traits. The first one is a big one. It's in a lot of feats. It's called Unstable. Unstable actions can be used once for no penalty. But you can use another one. However, if you do, you must make a DC 17 flat check. On a failure, your innovation malfunctions and you can no longer use unstable actions on it until you spend 10 minutes making adjustments and retuning it. The next trait is the range trip trait. This is exactly what it sounds like. You can trip at a range, but you do take a minus 2 penalty. And tethered is exactly what it sounds like again. The weapon is tethered to something, so you can pull it back after you've thrown it. So, now let's talk about class features. First up is Ancestry and Background, pretty much the same as all other classes. I already went over the initial proficiencies, so now let's talk about Explode. Explode, for two actions, basically allows you to blow up your innovation, dealing 2d6 fire damage in the 5 foot emanation around you or your innovation, if your innovation is a minion, with a basic reflex save. Also, uh, at 5th level and every 2 levels afterwards, that damage goes up by 1d6. Uh, and as you level up, you can make the explosion bigger. So now let's talk about the big thing. Your innovation. You can choose one of three things for your innovation to be. Armor, a construct companion, or a weapon. Let's get started with armor. So, if your innovation is armor, it has the following statistics. AC bonus plus 4, dex cap plus 1, check penalty minus 2, speed penalty minus 5 feet, strength 16, which is rather high, bulk 2, and it's in the composite group. Um, other than that and the fact that you can put modifications on it, it acts just like regular armor. You can put runes on it and everything. The initial modifications you can put on armor all give you resistance equal to 2 plus half your level to certain types of damage. For example, harmonic oscillators give you resistance to force and sonic damage. Metallic resistance gives you that resistance to acid and electricity. Otherworldly protection seems to work a little bit differently. Uh, it's, you get two. You get either negative... Or if you happen to be like a Danfear or something, then you get positive. And it also applies to any alignments that can damage you. For instance, if you're chaotic good, then it applies to evil and lawful damage. And then the last one is thermal insulation, which gives you cold and fire. And it makes sense too, because you want it to protect you, and that's what it does. The second type of innovation you can have is a Construct Companion. This works almost identically to the Animal Companion. But the difference is, is, that the, is that the Construct Companions all have the same stats and they get, they get your Overdrive action if you've already commanded them this turn. Plus you can mod it. Pretty basic. So, Amphibious Construction just gives you 
it just gives your conch the ability to swim, basically. Swim speed of 25 feet. Sensory Array just lets you give your, your innovation low light, dark vision, and tremor sense. Uh, accelerated Mobility, your innovation speed is 40 feet. And Projectile Launcher just gives it an unarmed range attack that deals 1d4 bludgeoning or piercing. Finally, Upgraded Cortex just makes your innovation trained in Intimidation, Stealth, and Survival. That's pretty much it. Those are the those are the main initial modifications you can have. The last type of innovation you can have is a weapon. It starts with the same statistics as a level zero simpler martial weapon that you have access to. You can put fundamental and property runes on it as you would be able to with ordinary weapons. But because of its unique features, you're the only one that's trained in it. It's the same thing with the armor. I forgot to mention that. Uh, the only other difference is that uh, you can mod it. So, for mods for a weapon. First up, we have Complex Simplicity. So, you can increase the damage dice of your, of your innovation weapon by one step if it's simple. And you can also add any of the versatile traits to it. Entangling Form just gives your innovation the grapple and trip traits. Uh, hefty Composition just gives it the shove and versatile bludgeoning trait. Modular Head just gives it the modular trait for all three damage types and uh, you can interact with it to make it non-lethal. Or remove the trait if, it's, if it is non-lethal. Classification tools just gives your innovation the disarm and non-lethal traits. Razor prongs just gives your innovation the trip and versatile slashing traits. Segmenting frame just gives you the modular trait for bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And you can interact to collapse the item down to light bulk or to return it to its normal form. Uh, when it's composed, slaps to light bulk, it's got the concealable traits. So you can hide it. Now let's talk about the overdrive ability. So, my inventor uses this all the time. Almost every round. Almost every encounter, I should say. So, for one action, with the manipulate trait, so if the enemy has attacks of opportunity, you can get hit by that for doing this. But, for one action, you can make a crafting check with a standard DC for your level. If you get a critical success, your strikes, and your construct strikes, if you have a construct companion, uh, deal additional damage equal to your intelligence modifier for one minute. But you can't use overdrive again for one minute after the effect expires. If you get a success, you get half the bonus damage. On a failure, you just fail. You, you can try again, though. But on a critical failure you take fire damage equal to your level. And so does your construct if you have a construct companion. And you can't use overdrive again for one minute. And of course the last first level thing is Peerless Inventor, which just gives you the inventor skill feat even if you don't meet the prerequisites, which you wouldn't. Because <laughs> inventor is normally, uh, no, you normally have to be a master in crafting to take inventor. So, for second level, skill feats, general feats for third level, and then we have the reconfigure ability. This basically allows you to spend a day of downtime tinkering with and attempting a crafting check with a high DC for your level. Uh, on a success, you can change one modification to a different modification of the same kind. So, initial, breakthrough, revolutionary. You know, just basically you can spend a day to change stuff on your innovation. Rather than having to spend a week. Yeah. So, continuing with third level, we have skill increases pretty much the same. Um, ability boosts at fifth level, ancestry feats at fifth level, uh, simple and martial weapons and unarmed attacks to expert. Uh, at seventh level, we have reflex safes to expert. Also at seventh level, we have... Offensive boost. Strikes that rely on your innovation. 
deal an additional 1d6 damage with the type determined by the boost you choose. So, if your innovation is armor, the boost applies to your melee unarmed strikes and the melee strikes with one weapon you choose during your daily preparations. If your innovation is a conscious companion, it applies to its strikes, and if your innovation is a weapon, it applies to strikes with that weapon. You can spend downtime to switch to a different boost in the same way that you can uh, switch your modification with reconfigure. And you can choose from cold, fire, electricity, bludgeoning, slashing, piercing, and acid. And then we have weapon specialization, which just is pretty much the same as every other class. So at ninth level is Breakthrough Innovation. This just allows you to choose a breakthrough modification for your innovation. Uh, you can choose a initial modification of the same type, uh, but these are going to be better. We'll start with armor. First up is Dense Plating. Just gives you resistance to slashing damage equal to 2 plus half your level. Pretty simple. Um, so Enhanced Resistance just allows you to improve upon the initial modification's ability to resist damage. Whatever type of resistance you chose for your initial modification, that goes up to 2 plus your level, and rather than 2 plus half your level. If you have more than one, you choose which one that apply, which one it applies to. Heavy Construction just makes your armor basically full plate. Layered Mesh, resist, resistance to piercing damage 2 plus half your level. Uh, tensile Absorption is same thing, but bludgeoning. Now let's talk about the Breakthrough Construct Modifications. Advanced Weaponry just lets you pick an initial weapon modification and give it to your golem. The Unarmed Attack must meet any requirements for it, though. And Climbing Limbs just gives your construct a climb speed equal to half its land speed. Uh, durable Construction is just toughness for it. Pretty basic. Refined Cortex requires upgraded Cortex to take, but it gives you expert proficiency in Intimidation, Stealth, and Survival. For any of these skills in which it was already an expert, it gains Master Proficiency instead. If you have the, the Revolutionary Innovation class feature, these proficiencies improve to Master or Legendary if the Innovation was already an expert. So you can get in Legendary in these. But like I said, you have to have the upgraded Cortex modification to select this. So now let's talk about the Breakthrough Weapon modifications. First we have ins Inconspicuous Appearance. This is for melee weapons only. Your innovation gains the Backstabber and Versatile Piercing traits. Also, if it happens to have Light Bulk, it gains the Concealable trait as well. Next we have Advanced Range Fighter. This is for range on, ranged only. It, your innovation gains the Sniper trait and increases its range increment by 10 feet. That's pretty much it. So a bit more damage and, um, yeah. Aerodynamic Construction is for melee weapons only. Uh, your innovation gains the Sweep trait and the Versatile Slashing trait. Integrated gauntlet can only be used for one-handed weapons, and you can't and it can't have the two-handed traits. You basically combine your innovation with a gauntlet, so it gains the free hand trait. Manifold alloy makes your innovation cold iron and silver. You can deal more damage to certain creatures. Uh, Tangle line can only be used for thrown weapons. Uh, the rank, it gains the range trip and the tether trait. That's what those traits were for, is this. So after that, we have Class DC to Experts, Armor to Experts, Will Saves to Master and Auto Crit Successes, Perception to Experts, and Weapons to Master. And then we have Complete Reconfiguration, which basically just lets you swap as much as you want in a day. Pretty much. You do have to swap something for something, though. You, you can't just redo everything. Next is some extra damage from Greater Weapon Specialization, Master and Fortitude saves, and Auto Crit Successes. 
and Master in Inventor Class DC. 17th level, you gain access to Revolutionary Innovation. It's just another modification to your innovation. Let's start with the armor once. First is Energy Barrier. While wearing your armor, you gain resistance to all energy damage equal to 2 plus half your level. You have to have one of the initial modifications for armor other than otherworldly protection to take this modification. Incredible resistance just improves upon dense plating, layered mesh, or tensile absorption. The resistance you gain from those modifications, from that, from whichever one you pick, uh, increases to 2 plus your level instead of 2 plus half your level. Physical protections just gives you resistance to two plus equal to two plus half your level to all physical damage. You must have dense plating, layered mesh, or tensile absorption breakthrough modification to ex to select this modification. And rune capacity just gives you an extra property rune for your armor. Now let's talk about revolutionary construct modifications. Flight Chassis just gives your innovation a fly speed of 25 feet. Runic Keystone lets you put property runes on your golem, even though it isn't a weapon or a suit of armor. An armor property rune affects your innovation as if it were the wearer of the armor. A weapon property rune grants whatever properties it would normally grant to a weapon to your innovation's unarmed attacks, following all the requirements as normal. If the rune only affects ranged attacks, it has no effect on your innovation unless it has built-in ranged attacks. If the rune would affect uh, the physical appearance or shape of the weapon or armor, the rune has no effect on your golem. Resistance coating just gives your golem resistance 5 to all damage, except adamantine. But, I mean, you know, yeah... And uh, wall configuration just lets your innovation transform into a wall. When it's in that, uh, it's flat-footed and it takes a minus two penalty to AC because it can't defend itself. Um, and the wall can be 10 feet tall and up to 30 feet long, but it's rather thin as well. Uh, it blocks and it also blocks line of sight and effect unless your innovation has half its maximum hit points or fewer. In which case, it has a bunch of holes in the wall, so uh, allowing creatures to see through and attack with standard cover and tiny creatures to slip past. So now we have to talk about revolutionary weapon modifications. Attack Refiner just gives your innovation the Black Swing and Shove traits. Deadly Strike just gives your innovation the Deadly D8 trait, uh, but if it already has it, then it's a D12 instead of gaining Deadly D8. Enhanced damage increases your innovation's weapon damage dice by one step, but doesn't stack with complex simplicity. Momentum Retainer just gives your uh, weapon a the forceful trait. Accessible Weapon gives your weapon reach. Impossible Ally makes your weapon count as all seven Sky Medals, although I've never even heard of half of these. I don't even know how to pronounce uh, most of them. But this allows you to do more damage to certain types of creatures. And Rune Capacity just gives you another weapon rune on it, just like the armor does. Uh, property rune. Not, obviously not a potency rune, because that would be broken. Okay, now let's talk about the last two class features. Starting with Infinite Invention. This one's kind of eh for me. I love the fact that, that you just automatically fix your invention if, if it's destroyed or broken. What I don't like is that you can change it to a different innovation. And change your modifications and uh, an offensive boost. The thing is that it basically makes the subclasses completely worthless. Because you can just change everything every day, which is just stupid. Yeah, you're at, yeah, it's a level 19 thing, so you're probably not going to get this far, but I mean, still, I, uh, I just don't like it. I just do not like it one bit, that part of it.
I love the part about it, you just automatically fixing it, but the second part, no. And medium armor mastery just gives you master in armor. And that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more Pathfinder 2nd Edition content. Next week, I will be covering the Inventor Feats. You can check out my Facebook, my Discord, and my Twitter feed. Links are in the description. You can also check out my Demons and Deities homebrew game in the card. So until next time, let's play some Pathfinder. One, two, three, four.